cool. So yeah, thanks for coming, everyone. Um, this is uh, OUMDS's first speak preventive term. Today, we're very happy to welcome Jamie and the band Shushu for a kind of chat slash short Q&A. So I'll do a brief intro for those who might be less familiar with their work. <clears throat> so Shushu is a band based out of San Jose, correct? Uh, we started in San Jose, but haven't been there in since 2003 <laughs> oh <laughs> slightly out of date there uh no worries so yeah currently Lo los angeles of... los angeles now yeah okay somewhere in la so yeah consisting of jamie and angela uh they've released over 10 records uh to much acclaim uh the last record oh no came out last year um was one of our favorites here at OUMDS. so yeah thanks again for coming jamie how's it going uh, it's a pleasure. Um, it's a little mixed week. There's some bad political news today, but uh, personally, I'm doing okay. You, how are you? I'm great, thank you. Yeah. Um, what was the, the bad news, if you don't mind me asking? Oh, I, I don't know if this is being covered internationally. There was a, uh, last year during the Black Lives Matter protest, there was a teenager named Cal Rittenhouse who was walking around the protest with a machine gun and uh, murdered two people there and he was uh, and shot another person and he was, he was acquitted today. It was, oh, wow. it was a long trial. Yeah, it's, I don't know. Just the, the darkest example of what the United States can be. Mm. Well, I'm sorry to hear it that. Just, it just have, it, the news just came out like 10 minutes ago. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. So, yeah, I guess uh, the other thing in the room, as it were, uh, to get out of the way initially, kind of how's the pandemic sort of affecting things at the moment in California? Uh, are things still kind of locked down or coming back to normal now? Or kind of what's the situation? It's it's okay i mean it's certainly better than it was the vaccination rates in california are uh higher they are higher than they are the average is higher than it is uh nationally mm -hmm. um it's um because it's a big state and there's a lot of regional differences it really varies depending specifically on where you are i mean even within particular cities um sure the neighborhood that the neighborhood that i live in was un unfortunately uh, a, a lot of people died. It was that one of the mm. worst death rates in Los Angeles. Um, so here people are still finally, it took a long time to get settled, um, but finally people are starting to be a lot more careful. Um, in different parts of the, the city, it's as if nothing happened. And, and you know, in other mm -hmm. parts of California, people are still being incredibly cautious and sensible. And in other places, it's, you know, as <laughs> bananas as it ever was. Yeah. How, was it at, how was it at Oxford? In Oxford? It's okay, yeah. Uh, last year was pretty rough, to be honest, in terms yeah. of like with the uni and everything. There was basically nothing you could do. Um, I imagine that's so it wasn't too fun being a student. Definitely not. Yeah. Uh, but now, like things are pretty much back to normal. Um, that, that's good. The vaccine take has been pretty good where we are, thankfully. Um, I think it's just like big, kind of large scale social stuff is, uh, is the last thing to come back. Yeah. Um, yeah. Kind of everything else, kind of, you know, study wise, we can, you know, use all the facilities and everything. It's just kind of like, you know, big parties, big sort of balls that are kind of being cancelled right. uh, sometimes. So, yeah, I guess continuing on the pandemic thread briefly, um, obviously the music industry is kind of one of the hardest hit industries by COVID. Uh, you know, so much of an artist in the income comes from touring. So, and as we know, streaming isn't really an adequate replacement as an income source. Um, so, yeah, I guess, do you think this is sort of marked kind of a turning point in terms of how artists source their income? Uh, and I've seen a couple of different things like, you know, live stream concerts and, you know, I saw you guys tried out like a subscription kind of thing. So yeah, obviously COVID has been less than ideal, but do you think this could maybe be almost like a, a healthy side effect in the long run that artists now have kind of other avenues to draw income I, from? I, I think so. I mean, touring is a, doing, you know, I mean, for a, I mean, a relatively small band like us in order to make a living, we have to tour a lot. Yeah, and you know, a small amount of touring is fine, but a lot of touring, physically and you know, and, and emotionally, is frankly bad for you. <laughs> so, sure. uh, I mean, obviously, I wish it was under different circumstances. Um, but having, you know, not toured, I mean, we we start we we played a couple of one off shows in the, mm -hmm. in the last in the last couple of months, but we I I don't know that we'll tour again until fucking i don't even know we'll tour in 2022 it's still quite quite shaky mm -hmm. um uh but it had it, it was a it was I, I think for me i you know have, having toured so much for almost 20 years i realized having not toured that i may have had enough 
<laughs> I mean, not yeah. entirely, you know, but, you know, touring like five months a year. I don't think I got, I, it was, I, I realized how much that was uh, taking out of me. Um, so, you know, the, the subscription thing that we've been doing is, I think is going to be a way to, you know, it's, it's, you know, we don't make that much money off it, but it's enough to sort of very, if, you know, conservatively supplement, you know, maybe two months less of touring mm. a year, um, uh, you know, which is obviously going to be a lot more healthy. And it's, it seems, it seems as if people enjoy it and uh, have, having to basically crank out an additional amount of music every month is, um, improve my studio chops, which, which I, we don't been looking for an opportunity to do. Mm -hmm. uh, I think, I think for a lot of other, I have, I have some friends who, I mean, I, I, I love playing live and I really feel incredibly fortunate to have the opportunity to do it. But I, you know, if, if, if I, if I, if, at a, if, an, if on a nine out of 10 scale playing live is a nine recording for me as a 10, I just oh, wow. prefer recording slightly more, yeah. but I have, I have, I have friends for whom playing live is the entire point of them making music at all. Mm -hmm. It's been a real, a, a much more of a struggle for them. Um, uh, personally, just in, in terms of, you know, the, uh, sort of, uh, satisfying the internal reasons for which they participate in music calls that a, cu a couple of friends have really have really been struggling with uh, the massive turn down being able to play live mm. yeah i can imagine so i guess um moving back to the present uh obviously you released uh, oh no your latest lp last year um oh it was uh, uh early this year earlier this year my yeah my in, uh, february amusingly i um was just writing something about it and wrote down 2020 also not 2021 so you're not alone <laughs> mm, um, it was it was in the, the early early spring this year sure okay i'll uh i'll fire someone for that um so yeah there was obviously a pretty impressive array of collaborators uh, on that one uh, for me personally uh, greg sonia and liz harris huge huge fans of their stuff Actually, um, Greg is the per is the person I was speaking with. Uh, I was speaking about most specifically who was having a particularly hard time not playing oh, live. Oh wow! <laughs> yeah, this I mean, amongst concept, other people, but, but uh, yeah, they, um, they're a remarkable live band. Yeah, he we we talked about it a few times. He's, he's yeah. a, I think they're playing a little more, but it's really hard on him. For sure. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I guess I wanted to know what's the kind of what's the secret sauce, you know, in like surrounding yourself with so many other kind of incredible musicians. You know, there's been so many great Shushu collaborations. Like, to what do you kind of attribute that to? I, I mean, a lot of it is just luck. You know, I mean, I, Greg, speaking of Greg and, and Liz, we at the same time all lived in the Bay Area in Northern California mm -hmm. um, when we were, when all the bands were starting to get rolling. Um, I don't know if scenes even exist anymore because the internet has you know sort of uh, specialized things and you know, decentralize them to such a degree but mm. in the early 2000s in the bay area uh for a few years there was uh a, a pretty healthy and quite diverse experimental and sort of more adventurous uh rock music scene yeah. um and we you know, just it was just geography and just playing at the same little shitty tiny places together we we became friends um, you know, but, but with, uh, with other people, it's, uh, you know, a, a lot of people that we've collaborated with, I have not even met personally and didn't know personally, but I was just a fan, fan of and asked if mm. they would be interested. And um, if anybody did end up on something, they were just gracious and generous enough to participate. It's basically, any time we've collaborated with, with somebody, it's, it's, uh, it's because we are, you know, whether or not we are friends. Uh, but also, if we are friends, it's because we're great admirers of their work. For sure. Yeah, so do you think, almost like, ironically, COVID has kind of been more conducive to these kind of collaborations? Because, you know, everyone's kind of stuck at home and looking for something to do. Oh, yeah, probably. I mean, we, we were going to, we started this record and had planned to do it as the West prior to COVID. Um, but mm. considering the circumstances, it, it did seem a little bit more timely. Um, uh certainly other musicians i know have become more involved in in uh you know doing a little not a little but you know doing side projects or doing uh auxiliary types of work uh more often because you know a they're home and have time to do it and then also it's a way to connect with people if you can't be together physically sure so i guess kind of continuing on the topic of like changes in the industry i want to get your opinion on kind of 
the role of social media, um, kind of virality, uh, virality in promoting music? Do you feel like, you know, I think it's platforms... the worst thing that's fucking happened <laughs> to the music business in the long yeah. history of shitty things that have happened to the music uh-huh. business. I was going to say, uh, like, with TikTok and things like this, you know, do you think kind of 30 second song snippets, that's kind of like, you know, a commodification of the art form? Or it's like, I mean, you know, I mean, the commodification of music happened long before that, but social media just seems to be continuing to, you know, kick in the face of, you know, what little honorability <laughs> there is in large scale music. Yeah. Um, I mean, it, my griping about it comes from being a music fan. Uh, I mean, mm-hmm. as, as somebody who has played in a band for a long time, I, you know, uh, pretty much have thrown my hands up at whatever it is and you know i can participate in it or not i have the choice to do that to part, to be a part of things or not so it's not as if it's really forced on me particularly well some things i guess are um uh so as a musician it doesn't affect me that much other than if i choose for it to um mm. but as a music fan i it's it's been a incredibly disappointing last several years and so far as interesting new music coming mm. about and i think i think you know a lot of it obviously has to do with essentially people i'm sorry i'm gonna be really bitchy about this <laughs> really short attention spans kind of this <laughs> or, like, you know, I mean, music, music essentially just becoming new music essentially becoming a short commercial for you know whatever fucking neon sweatpants the person who's making it is wearing i mean it's not really a, necessarily about trying to make something that will move some somebody else a listener or yeah. add something culturally or expand what music could possibly be or particularly about imagination even i mean it's it's just you know when you call it when you call it you know it's just becomes media it doesn't become uh, art anymore mm-hmm. and sometimes i feel like kind of a tool using the word art so liberally but you know when it becomes art versus media then, then what the fuck else you can describe it as um it's incredibly disappointing. Uh, I keep trying to convince myself every couple of years, oh, people are just figuring it out. It's a new thing. And eventually we'll come around and something wonderful and beautiful will come out of it. Um, so far, I have yet to see that occur. Um, I am really hoping that it does, uh, that, that, that that postulation is, is in fact true. And it's just it's sort of a new frontier that people don't know how to operate with any sort of integrity yet. Um, yeah, you know, and I guess also, Jeez Louise, apparently it's really bothers me. <laughs> going on. So for sure, she signed um, up on TikTok. You you wouldn't be happy with that promotion. I mean, I would I would not ever organize that myself. I mean, if somebody just did it again, it's kind of out of my hands. Um, I mean, if, if some if somebody uses one of our uh, something that we have worked on and is able to make something else out of it, and they feel fulfilled by that, then go for it. But you know, again, as a music fan, I don't necessarily think that that pursuit is doing anything good for music um i mean it's doing things you know good for filling a, uh an emotional hole that people have that need to you know put themselves out of the world and in, in, in such a to me sort of you know thin and tiny way but also because i don't look at it i'm sure there's a ton about it i don't understand um so you know I, part of this is coming from willful ignorance and part of this is coming from just being a fucking curmudgeon that generally, you know, since I was probably seven years old. Um, I don't know. I mean, it also, it also, you know, it's also led to sort of, uh, the sort of viral music reviews. I mean, people mm. essentially, if there's one review by somebody popular, people will literally cut and paste that review and that it, you know, as if it is their own review. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, uh, educated critical music reviews are almost non-existent. I mean, there's a few outlets that people still have writers who know jack shit about music, you know, are writing, but, you know, probably 90% of the places it's, you know, music criticism is the same as TikTok. It's just memes at this point. I mean, even on some, you know, on the on the biggest, most popular sites, it's essentially what it is. Yeah. Um, anyway, you asked me about the thing that aggravates me the most about music. <laughs> Forget <laughs> my rant. <laughs> no worries. I think a lot of people probably feel the same way you know even in the kind of the quote-unquote respected um you know reviewers and, and outlets the you know the I'm comment sure. sections the kind of the, the interactions are still like you know very sort of light kind of light and uh, meme meme focused so i think i'm sure i, I, can I can't imagine being a, yeah being a serious music writer trying to be a serious music writer right now must be incredibly dispiriting 
Um, Completely. Anyway, good luck, yeah. future music writers. <laughs> um, Be strong. <laughs> and kind Don't of give similarly, up. <laughs> similarly on this topic, I, I wanted to sing something by you, kind of the idea of, you know, working on a brand um, in this kind of social media dominated age. Do you think it's, you know, equally important to work on, you know, a sort of recognizable image. Don't, like don't even fucking finish um, asking me this question. I'm just going to throw the up. I don't give zero fucks about that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, the point of music is to make something that you put out to the, that you put out into the world and that may move somebody in a particular way. Um, if you if you do that, then you have, then uh, then you are successful. Um, if you are if you are able to do that, if you're able to be an honest musician and an open musician and a giving musician, um, that is the only thing you need to fucking worry about. Mm -hmm. All the other stuff, it's it, it's completely and totally pointless. I mean, there certainly is an aesthetic aspect of music, and a lot of bands, uh, you know, the way that they look and they present themselves makes the music make sense, and it certainly looks cool and it's and it is enjoyable to look at as part of mm -hmm. an aesthetic. But insofar as concentrating on what your brand is and who the you know how the fuck people mm. perceive you fuck that just do absolutely do your best put your whole heart into it and then hopefully the people for whom the music you're making is meant for will will uh it will it will it will come to them mm. more than likely if it is of quality and you mean it then people will come to it don't sure. just this is, a, this is an incredible fucking waste of time and energy spend your time <laughs> spend your time making better music instead of instead of trying to be cool mm -hmm. again so it's a never <laughs> crabby bitch sorry <laughs> no I, I can completely get that so it's never sort of a thought at the back of your head we want a kind of like you know artistically some sort of like you know visual consistency for example like in album artwork and something like this you know you've got the whole yeah, like, I, I mean, that, I mean but it doesn't have anything i mean for the I, since we started doing that with uh angel the record angel goes for a classroom in 2014 but it's not about branding at all i mean for, for us um, mm -hmm. And again, forgive me for sounding like a um, pretentious tool, but I am kind of pretentious. So, but I, um, it's we just we it we we did it for aesthetic reasons. It's not it's not branding sure. at all. Um, sure. For for us, uh, it's um, it's a it's an interesting creative challenge. To well, I guess there were two reasons. Part of it is we felt with that record. It was it's kind of the beginning of the second decade of being a band. We were somewhat subconsciously, but beginning to notice that we were changing our approach. And it seemed like it could be an interesting way to sort of mark a second chapter in what we were doing. Mm -hmm. um, and then also it's an interesting creative challenge to, I mean, um, we're definitely doing what the next record we're working on right now. And I'm not sure if we'll continue to do it after mm -hmm. that. We have to, Angela and I have to talk about it. Okay. But, you know, having there be two colors and one symbol and one iteration of, one symbol related to the record and then one iteration of the sort of shushu x which we we stole that egg that idea from throbbing gristle um <laughs> you know and numerous other sort of you know british proto-industrial and industrial bands mm -hmm. have done that kind of thing so um mm. uh and prince i guess also of course uh but you know but it wasn't about branding i mean it was just more a, just a, a part of an aesthetic pursuit or uh an aesthetic consideration or um just I, I, God, I sound like an asshole. Or just like <laughs> another way to try to. Uh, I, okay, we we are extraordinarily fortunate, and I mean, there's not a ton of people who are interested in, in Angela's and my band, but the people who do seem to be interested in it seem to be very devoted and incredibly supportive, and astonishingly kind and sweet to us. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I think you know coming up with a symbol a few years ago it's just a, a way to sort of um in in a similar way that throbbing gristle that kind of it's just, it's a symbol as much of people who are kind of in this and for lack of a better word and i'm sorry for saying this sort of community based around you know uh, a, a lot of ideas about music and uh, a lot of musical aesthetics and a lot of different interests in, in a particular aspect of music to try to kind of you know give that a visual uh iteration in a way okay i think i think i can see where you're coming from there with the sort of the separation between quote-unquote brand and then visuals sort of considering them as different aspects it's i mean it's just uh i mean it's it it, it 
it can be as much of a creative pursuit as making the music is. It doesn't, it doesn't have to be a commercial or you don't have to enter into it considering it as a commercial. You can enter into mm. it considering or trying to consider it as a, a creative pursuit. Um, I'm sure as time went on, this changed greatly. One of my favorite album designers is Peter Sabo. Mm. And uh, I'm sure this changed later for him as he became rich and famous. Is, you know, it's hard to avoid that thing. But I would imagine in the early days of, you know, coming up with the, you know, the, you know, the, the very famous post-punk records that he worked on and early synth pop records that he worked on, that his philosophy behind it was to make something that felt like the music and that was a visual manifestation of the feeling behind that music. It wasn't, I mean, it has since become branding and sure, completely out of his hands. I mean, the fucking Unknown Pleasures cover is, mm. you know, I mean, I've, I've people don't even know what that is a lot of times um it's a, i mean it's a symbol of something but uh, i you know kind of got became out of his hand but i you know i know at the beginning of that work it was a, it was entirely about aesthetics and entirely about you know a a, 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 uh, a true attempt at uh coming up with a new and meaningful particular type of aesthetic but, you know um i mean it is uh sort of callous as factory records became and you know you know when when it started out they meant it <laughs> mm -hmm. i'll uh, i'll remember that next time i see someone in the, the unknown pleasures t-shirt i'll try and recount they may love it joy division may be their favorite band but it also you know i mean it happened with the misfit symbol too you know the, sure. uh, yeah. i can't remember what the there's a name for the skull i can't remember what it is uh you know and a few a few other bands i mean it's just become a, it, it just means it, it just means you know punk rock or Whatever. Mm. It doesn't even really mean the misfits anymore. Yeah. But at first, that's that's not what the intent was. <laughs> um, kind of, I suppose, tied into that um, with kind of, I wanted to talk about sort of the concept of genres, and you know, I always find it difficult writing intros for these talks because I feel like as a musician, it's not you know comfortable being put in a box like you know this person makes art rock, this person makes you know freak folk or some kind of like weird subgenre. Um, especially you now with like quote unquote experimental music, I feel like the concept of genre is even more sort of nonsensical even. Um, do you find it kind of, you know, almost reductive in general to speak in terms of genres? Or like, how do you feel about, you know, being labeled as, you know? Personally, it doesn't really, like it personally doesn't really bother me. I mean, I can understand why it could bother somebody. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, it's a difficult thing to, you know, I mean, music is hard to, to talk about and it can put things into a context that, um, you know, you that you may or may not, that may or may not make it easier to determine whether or not you want, we want to become interested in it. Um, I mean, if somebody, if somebody said to me, oh, there's this country rap artist, that's not a genre that I know, I with 99% certainty that I'm going to find interesting. Um, you know, but if somebody said, I mean, not because I think, you know, whatever, if people like that music, great, I'm glad they found music that they like. But for me, that's not, a, you know, a musical pursuit that really works, resonates for me. You know, but if somebody said to me, oh, this is new art rec band you might like, then it, mm. I, I, would, I could think in a broad way, oh, maybe I'll go check it out. Um, so, you know, it just, it can make things in a very superficial way slightly easier to communicate. And in the beginnings of figuring out if you like something or not, it can, you know, be the first step into determining if you want to take the second step but mm. you know i don't think it's such a horrible thing i mean without it it would be i mean it's hard you know you could say something sort of reductive and lame about a band or you could go this is a band you know and then what the fuck is that you know it could be <laughs> you know one of a trillion other bands you know there's there's got to be some way to try and figure it out um mm -hmm. I mean, in the end, it doesn't really matter. I mean, in, in the end, what matters if, is if somebody listens to it and they like it or not. It, you know, you could call it whatever, whatever you want. Mm. So what kind of, you know, if you had to use some adjectives to, to kind of put Shushu in a box, as it were, what kind of, what would you use? Very like? fortunately, because I'm in the band, I am totally unresponsible <laughs> for having to make a determination. <laughs> Uh, uh, I think experimental uh, you know, is the one I used, but I probably yeah I'd probably say like uh, like avant rock mm. or experimental pop band, but that, I mean we're becoming less and less equated with pop and less and less interest in pop, so maybe experimental music is you know. Okay. But then I but in a lot of ways we don't entirely have you know if you think of you know uh, 
you know, you know, like Merzbau or yeah, uh, yeah. or uh, Lichens or something as experimental music. They're much, much, much more experimental than mm-hmm. Shushu generally is. Um, you know, but if you think about, I don't know, like the fucking Strokes or something. I mean, we're much more experimental than that. So I don't know. We're probably in the middle somewhere. Okay. But again, it, yeah. it is convenient, but it doesn't really matter. Okay, I feel like yeah, by experimental there, you're almost you know, acquainting that like listenable, right? Mertzfeld is, is on the kind of listenable range, definitely, definitely more towards the extreme. So yeah, maybe someone can make an interesting kind of tier list there. Like, oh yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure it's been done. Experimental and then strokes is right at the bottom somewhere. Anyway. <laughs> <Not complete. laughs> um, so yeah, I think that was, that was everything for me to be honest. Um, I hope, do you have some time to take some audience questions before we round up? Oh yeah, up? yeah. It would be a, be a pleasure. So yeah, if you have a question for Jamie, just like raise your hand on Zoom. Um, I think there's like a raise hand button, or just physically raise your hand, and uh, we can run through a couple. So yeah, don't don't um don't hold back, guys. Just okay. We've got one from from Tim here. Let me just so if you can put your video on, I think we can spot that. You. Um, perfect. Oh, so yeah, ask away. Hey, Jamie, thank you for coming to this. I was just wondering, you mentioned the um, Carl uh, Wittenhouse, uh, what was his name? Carl Rittenhouse, rather, trial at the start. Obviously, it's very um, depressing for everyone, um, kind of of a uh, liberal inclination that, you know, he managed to get away free. But do you find that rage kind of to be creatively useful sometimes? Do you ever write music, you know, kind of angry about something in the world and find that you manage to kind of channel it into, into a song or some kind of art? Like, um, does, it, does it ever happen to be useful in that way it's hard it's i mean we have certainly written songs that are a reaction to um uh oh and before thanks for the roundabout condolences <laughs> the fucking world we live in um we have certainly written songs that are a direct reaction to particular political or social situations but it's hard for me to I wouldn't necessarily, it's hard for me to describe it as necessarily being useful. Um, I mean, they're never about, you know, they're never about things that I think, oh, I'm so glad that happened. Now I got a song out of it. You know? So, <laughs> yeah, uh, of course. I, I mean, I think music is for me personally can be a useful way to, to process something as horrifying as that. But I would I would be hesitant to say that the events themselves are necessarily useful. Um, does that distinction make sense? But I mean, yeah, I and, think and also, I mean, that's just me personally. I mean, I don't I don't think it's a it's a crazy way to think about it. Mm. Um, but just just in uh, just internally. No, the word useful I think was, uh, was badly chosen. I meant more like it's not it's not it's not badly sense. chosen. It's not badly chosen. I think it's just it's just as an individual, that's probably not how I think about it. Mm. Yeah, that makes sense. Thank you. Thank you. Nice to meet you. <laughs> you too. Cool. So I think we'll go to Jade next. Can you just turn your video on and then we can uh, spotlight you on the on the Zoom? Yeah. Hi. Nice. Yeah, sorry. I'm on my phone, um, so the camera may be bad. Um, I was just wondering, because you, you've mentioned um, Throbbing Gristle quite a bit, and I've been on a, like, a massive like Throbbing Gristle Cabaret Voltaire kick at the moment. And... I, I, I was kind of, I don't really know how to phrase this question, but um, I've always wondered why do like bands and artists from sunny California really always resonate with like gloomy post-punk bands from like 1970s <laughs> industrial <laughs> Northern England? Like, is it, like, I mean, like, it's like, you know, even like band like The Fall have like a massive fan base in like California and I get it with like other bands like that as well. I've always found this link really interesting and I can definitely see the influence maybe not like necessarily purely in like a sonic landscape but it's kind of like the I guess the kind of the humor in a way and like not taking yourself too seriously whilst also being you know experimental and kind of out there a bit um I don't know if you kind of do you see anything in this link particularly or am I just kind of no 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 you're not and I it's uh I have I have thought about it um so California is a, are you gone? Should I keep talking? There you are, sorry. Um, California is a curious place in that similarly to England, 
the natural landscape along the coast, the forests and the deserts are all extraordinarily beautiful, you know, as are, you know, the forests and, you know, the marshes and the coast of England. However, the cities in California, particularly Los Angeles, are a fucking ugly trash dumps. Like Los Angeles, despite the fact that, you know, in some of the wealthier parts of town, it's pretty, but, you know, largely Los Angeles is ugly as fuck. Um, it is a bleak, bleak, bleak place. Um, a lot of interesting things and, and cool things uh, and curious and surprising things happen here. But, I mean, it is it is largely a city where people from all over the world come to try to be something and, you know, 0.05% of them make it. So it's a city largely populated by people who are struggling financially and who have broken dreams. So it is, it's not, it's not a particularly happy place. So, you know, a lot of the music from, you know, uh, you know, British post-punk music and, you know, industrial music, uh, it makes a lot of sense in, you know, in a place like Oakland or San Francisco or, or Los Angeles or San Diego, which are the base, the big cities in, uh, in California. Um, it is sunny, but that just means that you could, you know, see all the fucking garbage better. You know? <laughs> um, yeah, that's, that's a, that, that's a good, that's a good question. It just means you have to go to the. It just means you have to go to the beach more often to sort of erase all of the shit you have to look at all the time from your mind. Thank nice you. to meet you. Thank you. Cool. So I think we'll run to Tina now. Um, reminder: if you just click raise hand, we can we can run through if we've got time. So just yeah, go ahead, guys. And yeah, take it away, Tina. Um, my question is, you, your songwriting is so revealing and raw, like you put yourself in- You wearing a shoe shoe shirt? You are so nice, thank Actually, you very much. Can I just show you this? This is my favorite shirt. But I get roasted like for wearing it. What? Oh, you're a boss, thanks. I really, that's very nice of you. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, so your songwriting is so revealing and like raw. And I've done, cause I'm an aspiring musician and every time I right, write on. something so revealing, I feel so like, scared to you know publish it and like even you know address it in music so i was wondering because you've been doing it for so long how are you able to like release such revealing music and put yourself in that position and be okay with it um even though you know it might be commodified or seen as just you know people might not understand it and yeah i i mean i wouldn't say i mean it's it's i mean the longer that i do it the the, the more nervous i become ab about pursuing things in the way that you're describing um uh you know but i'll you know and i think that's because you know the longer that you do it the more ingrained it becomes in your life and the more uh you you know the, the less separated you are from it as, as a person um it's a risk i mean you know it's it's a risk but uh and it can really, you know, people's reaction to it can really suck and, you know, make one feel pretty awful. Um, you know, but then on the other hand, I mean, if you think about any art or music that has been meaningful to you outside of something that you're working on, um, you know, more than likely it's going to be, you know, music or art that the person who made it really put themselves in the line and, you know, uh, you know went went for it yeah. um yeah i mean if you're gonna bother doing it at all then put you know put everything you have into it and you know do your absolute best and if if i mean i'm not saying that all music or all art to be good has to be ultra personal or ultra challenging but if that is what makes sense for for you when when you're making something um then you know it's got all or nothing i mean it, you know if if you if you if you if you completely go for it then somebody like yourself who for whom music like that is meaningful when they find it they're going to know that it's true and then what you've made will you know keep the wheel of uh uh you know of, of that kind of uh you know sort of sharing and, and mutual embrace rolling it's i mean it's hard to do it's it's just hard to do, and you just accept that it's hard to do, and um, 
and just stay offline as much as possible. <laughs> just don't look at any, yeah, I can't read I can't any stupid ass things that people say. Um, you know, but then at, at the same time, uh, you know, don't read any good things that people say either. And just, I mean, just be as unanalytical about it as possible. Um, make something completely do the absolute best you can put it out into the world and then make the next one and keep going and keep going and keep going. And just, uh, you know, don't look back and don't look laterally, mm. uh, just uh, work as often and as, as deeply and as much as you can. Certainly very meaningful to me. So thank you. Thanks. Um, P- sorry if that was patronizing. <laughs> not at all. Not at all. Okay. Do you think your like, I love your covers album of your own music. Do you think that's sort of a reaction? Like some of them are like completely work compared to the, original song like completely different do you think that's sort of like your take on the original experience or it's just something like completely different uh anytime we've done a cover it's a um, you know everybody who is or has ever been involved in the band is a are massive massive and deep music fans it's it's a way to try and say thank you to that particular music for what it's meant to us and you know and a lot of different music have meant you know radically different things so i mean when we we did a pussycat doll song it doesn't mean as much to me as, uh, you know, when we covered the Twin Peaks album or something. I mean, either the Whiskey Cats always sort of like, song was sort of, you know, raunchy and kind of dumb and fun. And, it, you know, being raunchy and dumb and fun is, uh, is part of life. You know, and the Twin Peaks soundtrack completely changed everything that I thought about, you know, art, you know, when we got started. So, uh, I mean, there's a lot of reasons to, to cover something, but at, at its core, it's always a, our, our attempt to say thank you. It's not our attempt to sort of, claim something as our own or mm. or personalize it beyond um a, a, a personal sign of gratitude but you know there's a lot of reasons to cover stuff it's just why we do it i meant like your covers of your own songs like um you know there are a few like different renditions of like, your own uh, oh music. yeah oh just the other other arrangements um it's it's uh, it's just a chance to it's a I mean, doing new arrangements of things is just another opportunity to be creative. I mean, a lot of times it's practical and there's just no way to do the studio version live due to the amount of equipment involved or who played on it or, but a lot of, a lot of times even when it is possible to do it the same, it, it's just a, you know, a, a chance to, to try something new. And, you know, I mean, we've been a band for a, a long time and if somebody has been coming to see us play, you know, for 15 years or something, um, you know, we don't want them to have to see the, uh, um if my friend is watching um to see the uh you know to see the exact same version they've already seen like 40 times or whatever thank you so much thank you nice to meet you thank good you. luck with music thank you so much cool so i think we'll go to ignace now i hope i'm saying that right um so if you want to turn your video on then i'll spotlight your video uh, yeah sure uh, so like, uh, first of all, I really want to thank you for uh, the video about making disgusting uh, sounds. I mean, it's been okay. <laughs> really, like it's I, it's been really inspiring for me and also like helpful with uh, showing people around me with whom I work creatively uh, the, like the appeal of the type of music I want to make. And uh, I wanted to ask you as a music fan. What are, are there any records from 2021 or just, you know, something that you've recently discovered that, uh, you know, you just really liked and wanted to share with people and, you know, uh, something you really want people to hear? Although, I mean, I, I am a deep, deep music fan, but I don't listen to tons of different records. Usually I'll find like two or three records, you know, in a six month period and I'll just listen to those two or three records. Um, I do, uh, I mean, I ha- actually, the music I've been listening to lately really has kind of nothing to do with disgusting sounds at all. <laughs> there's a, there's a, uh, a Delta Blue singer named, named Skip James, who, uh, was originally around in the thirties, but then was, but re-recorded a lot of his material in the sixties. So I've been listening to him a lot. And, um, another, uh, 60 soul singer named Arthur Alexander, who I've been listening to a whole lot. Um, and then I, I, on and off, there's, there's a, a, a French minimalist composer from who was mostly active in the 70s named Elian Radique, 
um, who I've listened to on and off, but lately have, have been uh, uh, yeah. pretty obsessed obsessed with her again. So it's just, just spell, those. Just pardon? spelled it out. Oh, uh, E L A I N E Elion, and Radik is R A. Okay. You find okay. it? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, the records that she put out on the label, important, important records. Um, I think if you're interested in uh, noise or, or drone music, those will blow your brains out. They're spectacular. Uh, one in particular called Adnos and another one, uh, the title is very long. The first letter begins with a T, the second one begins with an M. Um, I don't know how to pronounce the words, um, but look, look, at, look at the records that she has on important. They're spectacular. What are you listening to? Oh yeah, uh, recently uh, it's been kind of hard to say. Uh, I've checked out the Eraserhead soundtrack for the first time. It's oh kind of nice, almost, it's so great. Yeah, yeah. So uh, in terms of noise, uh, it's been like a lot of well, it's been ages since I've really listened to noise, but. Uh, I've been checking out the, well, uh, widely, uh, wild term of uh, 2021 weird rock releases, you know, like Black Country, New Road or Squid or something like that. And I've, I've been enjoying them like way after the hype came and, you know, I can actually assess them for, for my own. And that's yeah. cool. Yeah. Right on. Oh, I'm glad. That's great. Mm -hmm. Well, good luck with music. Thanks. Nice to talk to you. Oh, sorry, I was muted there, guys. I think we'll head to Rock quickly now. Maybe it's the last question. Uh, I'm sure Jamie's got a lot to get on with. So take it away, Rock. Yeah, hi. Um, I'm going to be honest with you, never listened to any of your music, but I've had a really good time. Yeah, <laughs> quite fun. Oh, rock. thanks. Um, yeah, but basically, uh, so I, I went to like quite a few gigs over the summer and like, you know, after a while of kind of not having anything, it was pretty good. But, you know, it, it, it just kind of, I was really reminded of how basically some artists just, like, I, I, you know, I can love their music, but they can just be complete trash live because they just like, <laughs> don't kind of, yeah, <laughs> they like don't work in, in the venue or they're like, they're not kind of, um, I suppose that, that connection between the artist and the audience just isn't there. Like, how, how do you sort of, yeah, I suppose go about kind of relating to your audience in a kind of gig sort of scenario and, and yeah, how, how, do you, how do you kind of like create an atmosphere? I'm not great at it. Uh, I mean, I'm essentially very shy. Um, so I think almost forever when we walk on stage, I'll say, hello, thank you for coming. I'll close my eyes and not look at the audience the entire time and just try and concentrate on what we're doing and listen to what's happening. Um, and then when we're done, we'll, we'll say thank you. Um, I think I think because I'm shy and I, I, I think and like the couple of times I've tried to like be chatty or relate to people sort of directly, yeah. I just look like a dick. So uh, I think because I, you know, I'm not good at it and I seem nervous and it seems very forced. So I, I have, felt like things work a lot better if we just are polite at the beginning, polite at the end, and then just concentrate on trying to play as well as we can. Some people are fantastic at it, you know, um, yeah. and, you know, more, more power to them, but um, it is, uh, it's not one of our strengths. So we just, we try to do what we hope we're better at um, and, and not, uh, not stumble through something that we suck at. But even then, like, I, I've had, I've been to, yeah, gigs where, you know, they're not giving us anything in terms of, like, they're not chatting with us or whatever, but they, I suppose the atmosphere is there. I, and I was basically just wondering, like... There's, there's not a lot of it, I mean, at least for us, I mean, I'm sure complete people who are total masters at it have more control over it. But for us, it's really just some nights they're everything is right and the connection between the people who came to the show and the band is palpable you know that it is there and it is uh, it is a remarkable sensation to get to be a part of something like that and sometimes i mean even in the same venue like a year later you know similar size similar type of crowd the sound is still good for some reason the stars are not aligned and it's, it's just isn't there i mean you try at the best you can you know to make it happen and also weirdly sometimes you think that you're fucking terrible or i think i'm fucking terrible 
And then people say, "That's I've seen you 15 times. That's the best show you've ever played. And you're like, okay, I'm glad you liked it. I thought I sucked. But I mean, it's, so much of it is out of your hands and, and luck or just the muse or the goddess of music is in control of it or who knows. It's a, um, it's a, it's one of the most interesting things about music is it's so completely, totally ephemeral and you have very little to do with it. It's coming from wherever in the universe it comes from. And you, you know, I happen to be in the room while it's occurring. Um, I wish that I could say tonight we're going to fucking rule. And then we rule. So I don't know. We always try to rule and sometimes it works and sometimes we blow. I don't, I don't know how to, there's, there's no way to control it. Fair enough. Yeah. 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 Um, did you see anything good? Did you go to any particularly good shows? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, the ones that were, were a bit shit, but I went to see Sisters of Mercy. It was, I don't know. They were bad? They were good. Well, see, I really like Sisters of Mercy, but they weren't. Yeah, me too. Just, there wasn't any kind of connection between ah, the crowd yeah. and the band, and it was, it was just sort of weird. That happens. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm, yeah. It's some, it, sometimes people have an off night. Yeah. It, it, despite, I mean, even legends like them, you know. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and, you that's know, the thing, is You kind of think that. Yeah. You know, you know, art school girlfriend, really good. Oh, cool. Art school links. I saw them at like a festival. That was that was awesome. Right on. I'm glad. Well, I hope the next show you go to is transcendent. Nice to talk to you. Okay. Cool. So, yeah, I think that kind of brings us to the end of uh, the event today. If there's, there's no one hanging around left with a question to answer. So, yeah, thanks. Huge thanks, thanks again, Luke. Jamie, for coming along. It was along. nice to talk to you. Um, and, uh, yeah, best of luck with everything with the band and just in general in life. <laughs> yeah, and, um, and you as well. Yeah. And uh, please, please forgive my 75 minute rant about computers in the beginning. <laughs> of course. No worries. All right. Yeah, take no, care. Thanks a lot. Uh, good luck. And yeah, hopefully catch you catch you live sometime uh when things start again uh, i hope so too right, take care Luke. bye you too yeah cheers jamie all right bye everyone bye bye